Welcome to Whole and Unleashed, a podcast about coming home to ourselves. I'm your host, Jessica Locke, a holistic mindset, strala yoga, and human design guide. This podcast is not about telling you what to do. It's about sharing stories and tools to connect to your inner wisdom and maybe give you an extra nudge towards living wholeheartedly. Because deep down, only you know what's best for you. We'll be talking mindset, business, recovering from burnout, human design, transitions, and so much more. Let's dive in, shall we? Yeah, I had to, yeah, relearn myself because I did have an identity that I kind of had to shift away from, but ironically, it was the identity that I think I began with. Hi, Megan. Welcome to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. Thank you so much for being here with me today. How are you? I'm good. Thank you for having me. I'm so excited to be here today. We met maybe a couple months ago through a mutual acquaintance of ours. And I felt like just from the first conversation, we hit it off right away but like we talked about the most random things to like life and spirituality so I'm super super excited to bring our listeners into your world who are you Megan what do you do do you want to introduce us to yourselves yeah so my name is Megan Walsh and um, you know I've not been into spirituality for a long time it was It was one of those ones where I think I lost it around, you know, when I was around like 13 or something and it, um, it was only when you kind of get to that point where you're in the darkness and you have a really bad year and it allows you to kind of open your mind. And, you know, I started to you know, see certain things and I'm a very logical person and things that didn't really make sense to me where I think when you don't have that kind of space to be in, you can be very judgmental. Mm. And it kind of allowed me to enter this kind of like new paradigm that I'm in, which is how I kind of created Fearless Lotus um, is diving into these (laughs) different modalities that I just became very curious about such as energy healing shamanism and druidism which I identify I think the most as a druid which I've been going through different um, training for so it's been kind of through this whole journey of self actualization of understanding who I am and a lot of them flow in together and um, there are similarities between each and every one of them very much around um, the inner healing the inner reflections and how a lot of the things that we focus on are kind of like mirrors of ourselves Mm. so you know in shamanism there's a lot of um Kind of finding your way in understanding where you're being triggered as well and not blaming others and even if people are triggering you there's something that's coming up within yourself and having that higher self-awareness and within druidism that i've been drawn to which has like a lot of similarities to shamanism is um very much around which both of them are connecting to the earth and connecting to the elements and having kind of that that support system where you honor all Mm -hmm. of the spirits within nature, which becomes so beautiful. And I've actually been able to, (laughs) it sounds, sounds weird to some people, but I've been able to connect with the trees and to hear their wisdom and almost like this whole network where there's you know spirits within the plants within every life form that you can connect into if you have the the patience and the awareness to be able to do that so a lot of the things that I've been bringing into Fearless Lotus is being able to 
live your kind of best, I don't know if best is the what word, but authentic self mm. and having that deep understanding allows you to kind of walk your own path and allowing people to walk with them. One of the trees called me a walker. So I walk with people. Oh, I want to know, I have so many questions about you know, <laughs> this world of yours, but you said something really interesting at the beginning, which was like your path, like your spiritual path, you like walked away from it, or maybe you moved yeah. away from it when you were 13. So let's go yeah. back from the beginning. How was spirituality for you at a younger age? And what oh. might have caused it to be like, no, maybe that's not for me right now. Well, it was, um, I was, I definitely had, um, when you look back into your past, you see things that you didn't see before, mm -hmm. but I was introduced to it at a younger age. Uh, one of my aunts, you know, she called herself like a white witch and she lived in Ireland and showed me all these tinctures that she would make and you know, very spiritual. And I have another aunt who um, is also has practiced shamanism as well. So it's always been within even my family. And I think when I was younger, you have these kind of ideas that you want to be special and all these things. And I'm not too sure what it was that kind of changed it, but I feel like I kind of got um, perhaps jaded when I was younger and you know I was like the weird kid so <laughs> the weird artsy kid so maybe that's why because it was uh it was uh I guess when I went into high school and moved and you know then I got more into a clique when I had friends and stuff like that where I was on my own for many years so maybe that's what it was that kind of drew me out of it and mm. I think I thought that you know I didn't have these gifts which it's funny because um one of my shaman coaches she would always say is that they're not gifts they're you know your abilities because it's anyone can tap into them and it's only as mm. I got older that it's it's not um it's not select few it's kind of I start to think of it as you know certain people have ears for things so it's not that for me, I, I'm horrible at languages, awful. I've been trying to learn French for years. <laughs> I don't have an ear for it, but it doesn't mean that I can't learn it mm -hmm. where, you know, when you have these intuitive, you know, abilities, some things are just easier, easier mm -hmm. to kind of flow into. So I think when I was younger, I just thought, you know, I don't have those gifts. So I just kind of, I think, shut myself off from it. And then when they started to pop up later in, in life, I became, I was so logical and it didn't match my personality or what my identity was at that point. So it just, I kind of pushed away from it. Cause I was like, eh, that's kind of like the weird artsy kind of person that I used to be. And I was like, no, I'm like super logical now. I can't, <laughs> I can't go back. <laughs> so it's it was interesting because like, you know, those tools that you're talking about, right now help you connect to yourself but at one point it disconnected you from others from you know your identity and the people around you and it's sort of come full circle in yeah. a way <laughs> yeah yeah I had to yeah relearn myself because I did have an identity that I kind of had to shift away from but ironically it was the identity that I think I began with <laughs> <laughs> I mean this is life right we learn and learn we learn things and I think as a kid we're trying to figure ourselves out so we we have to try different things <laughs> and yeah. in a way you understand people who go through tough times because we've been through it ourselves yeah yeah, yeah. and it's it's not an easy road to be on and sometimes it can be lonely um, mm -hmm. but I find when you find those people that really connect into it um, you can have some amazing conversations and just become so much more aware and you're kind of learning as you talk to more people. But the one thing that I did find was when I was kind of, <laughs> as I'd call it, like, you know, to my spiritual um, <laughs> closet was that I kept thinking like people would kind of rebuff me from it. And 
I'd get like a negative reaction, even my most logical friends and, um, and family. But the funny thing is, is that a lot of people would be like, oh, I had an experience like that. And it's like these different things were, it was almost like, they all kind of knew or they've all had some sort of experience, but they just didn't really talk about it or, you know, it wouldn't come up in conversation or anything like that. And it, it kind of allowed people to, you know, connect in that way where what I found, what, what I was doing is I was judging myself through their eyes mm. ahead of time. So it kind of allowed me to come out of that more so and talk about it more. That is like such a liberating part of the human experience when we get to share parts of ourselves that we think are deemed weird, <laughs> like different, but then it actually resonates with other parts of people that they also thought were different and they yeah. pushed aside. And then you, it's like you give other permissions to embrace that spiritual part. Tell me a little bit more about the difference. Is there a difference between shamanism and dru druidism? Like how, how do you define each of them? Yeah, like, uh, so druidism has more of a Celtic roots. So that's where um, it comes from almost of, uh, well, I think almost like thousands of years ago now. But it was actually... A group of people who you know it wasn't even like a religion which sometimes there are different parts of druidism that um that it can be but i think originally you know it was people that it was a way of being a way of life and it was very much they had this connection and this way of being but everything, the reason why I think there's a lot of crossover with shamanism is that a lot of references to the original Druidism was kind of wiped out because it was actually all oral. Mm -hmm. So a lot of the references of Druidism were from books from way back of say like Julius Caesar where he would reference them. Um, so that's why there's a lot of there's not a lot of details on the original one. So it was brought back um, a couple hundred years ago within the UK. And it was kind of brought back based on, um, I guess these references. And that's what now there's like different um, groves and stuff like that that have come out of it. So where um, a group of Druids is considered a grove which are kind of like an old group of trees because mm -hmm. they have a very deep connection with trees. What are some of the beliefs of Druidism? Um, so some of the beliefs of Druidism is very much taking ownership for everything that you do. Everything mm -hmm. that you do is a conscious choice and you kind of live that truth of who you really are and um you know taking that responsibility is probably one of the biggest ones from druidism and uh that's what you do a lot of ceremonies even when you come into druidism and that you make this commitment to yourself of mm -hmm. like walking this path and you do it to the best of your abilities you know, you don't half-ass it, <laughs> sort of thing. <laughs> really? There's no cheat code? <laughs> yeah, yeah, exactly. And, um, and some of the other ones, like, for, um, for the one I, I am with is the, um, you learn about the, the hunter. So it's all about, like, hunting energy. So mm -hmm. you have a certain amount of energy that you kind of expel each day. And um, in Druidism, you can actually gain back that energy. Like you can actually pull that energy back, which is where there's kind of like overlap with shamanism. Um, and in Druidism, they talk about your, your hunter. So you go, you do a lot of journeys in Druidism. And one of them is to find your hunter. 
and your hunter helps you to like pull back the energy to help you to be present. So it was funny because when I did mine, it was actually um, a stag. A stag had come to me and it was so beautiful. And it had these beautiful antlers. And it was telling me, but they told me that like your hunter had to actually be a predator. I'm like, why am I, why do I have a stag? Right. But the stag was teaching me to be present in each moment because it might have to like leap away or it might have to be in flight. So it's constantly vigilant. It's constantly in that moment of pure presence. So when, <laughs> so when I went into the next stage of it, they were saying, well, you need, you need an actual predator. <laughs> <laughs> you have your stag but you need a predator too <laughs> you made <Fine>. a friend <laughs> <laughs> how do you go through these journeys is it through meditation is it like some camping yeah. <laughs> it's kind of like being um consciously or you're it's it would be like if you're being awake in a dream is kind mm. of what it is so you're unconscious like dream kind of walking <laughs> Yeah, it's like it's your un your like almost like your unconscious mind like comes through it, and this is where you can connect with, you know, different deities. You can connect with like say different animals, spirits, trees, all these different things. And um, for those like full moon um, sacred circles that I do, that's what I take you through this um, a journey. So we all energetically meet up. So even if we're all in different places, I guide you through. And um, for Druidism, you will, you're walking through this forest and it's kind of like, this is your sacred space. Like you're, it's like your protected space mm -hmm. where, you know, things can come to you. Um, so that's where I ended up meeting my predator hunter, which is actually a bear. <laughs> oh, how did that come to be? Well, and that's what it wasn't something I was expecting because I was thinking, ah, oh, it's going to be like, you know, something like really cool, <laughs> like a lion or a tiger. <laughs> a bear is but, very cool. <laughs> and then I see this lumbering like grizzly bear comes out. I'm like, really? <laughs> oh. I'm like, oh, <laughs> this is not because I didn't really have any associations with bears at all. So when it came out, I was like, okay. And so I kind of asked the bear, so why? <laughs> and it's like, you know, it doesn't really talk, but you can, you can have a sense of what it's trying to teach you. And the first time it just kind of like started walking. So I'm just kind of walking with this bear <laughs> and it takes me to this river and we're sitting at this river and I'm very much an impatient person. So I now understand why the bear is my hunter, but I'm just like hanging out and like, all right, like, what are we doing here? And it's like waiting and it's waiting and the salmon comes up and yeah. And it was showing me alignment, right? Cause I had like last year, I felt so stagnant and I just felt so out of alignment and just so frustrated by everything and this was kind of the time when I had found um I had found the bear and we were sitting there and then it was I had finally understood that you know it's it's not about trying to force things to happen but being the patient one to allow things to come through with alignment and I think alignment's one of the hardest things to stay in, to stay that balance, because we get thrown off so easily. <laughs> it's one of these things back and forth, but allowing you to be present and patient. And remember, as we said with my shirt, uh, trust the universe is when we're allowed to kind of bring things back into alignment and for like the abundance to come in. So that's what mm -hmm. the bear was teaching me in that moment. Mm. Oh. wow <laughs> you <laughs> thought a bear wouldn't help you as much. yeah <laughs> and this interpretation is it something that you know it's a message that you your unconscious receives right do you also go to someone else to help you interpret it or is it confusing sometimes how do you make sense of the messages that you get um i find with when i 
get them, it's it's almost like your mind intuitively understands what mm-hmm. it's showing you is what I found when you're doing the journeys. And, um, and I find it's great because you can actually clarify and ask and they may not give you. So one of the things too, is they'll never give you like the full, the full message. You may have to kind of figure some things out, but you intuitively kind of know what the message they're trying to give you. There's also, I guess, like a lot of trust in yourself to go Mm -hmm. through something like that because it is confronting to see what your inner truth is, especially when you're out of alignment. It is confronting to have to show up for yourself, express who you are in a world that might chastise you for being different. So it is a journey of courage, but also like, it doesn't sound like, I don't know how to say it. Like not, it's not easy. It's not just like a ride in the park. (laughs) Yeah. Oh no, it's definitely not. But there is, um, I do find there is solace in in knowing that you are supported by things that you Mm. cannot perhaps see. And I think sometimes we do feel really alone and isolated. And especially I found it helped me during the pandemic. And frankly, it's helped me even in my corporate life where it's actually allowed me to show up as a leader in a completely different way where I don't I don't have fear of saying what I mean and allowing my voice to be heard but in a way that is supportive to others and it's funny because I don't know if it's if it's something that is because it's bringing those two sides together I don't think a lot of people see it coming sometimes. So I'll just make comments. Oh, that was insightful. (laughs) It's like these pieces of wisdom from things that, you know, you're learning from ancient times is, and then bringing it into a space that perhaps I think now has kind of opened the door through the pandemic, through mindfulness is that people are being a lot more open to kind of bringing those two sides together mm-hmm. instead of having them separate right because they're uh, not it's just yeah people are afraid of it sometimes so they want to compartmentalize yeah yeah for sure and um last year I even took a positive psychology oh. practitioner certification yeah. just to kind of deal with the pandemic and to learn things from a psychological standpoint and the thing that I love the most is there were things that they studied that were, I was like, oh my God, that's shamanism. <laughs> or I'm like, oh, these are different techniques of things that were taught, you know, ancient wisdom that they were bringing in and then starting to study. So mm-hmm. I think that was just. And just labeled it under something else, yeah, more scientific yeah. <laughs> for people's so, comfort level. <laughs> yeah. And it was funny because there was a study and I was kind of blown away that he was essentially describing journey like Mm -hmm. as you journey and you talk to things or to people or anything really and he was saying there was really no difference from when you journey to say if you're talking to a wise person versus actually speaking to a wise person that they found it was almost the same so I thought that was pretty wild that's profound yeah so it was kind of nice because it was seeing the scientific aspect with almost the spiritual aspect too yeah yeah and we talked about druidism so what is shamanism well there's definitely different types of um, shamanism so I studied under um, Heather Ashamara who um, who she does more like European shamanism but her teacher was Don Miguel Riaz. And I don't know if you know, he wrote the book, The Four Agreements. Oh. Yeah. Whoa, six degrees of separation, even less. (laughs) Yeah, so, and it was funny because, you know, his book, even within like the corporate world, my mother, um, she actually used to have all of her staff read it, like back in the day, because she thought it was just so amazing. But a lot of people didn't know that he was a shaman. 
Um, And again, that's where it kind of goes back to these ideas of understanding. So he talks about the dream world and it's how we perceive our reality, but saying that that's not what reality is. And this is where you start taking off your mask when you start taking away from the mirrors. And this is like the things of where he says that um, don't take things personally, which we all know this, but we do, right? And we get angry and then we blame people. We blame the external. Yeah. But it's not, it's not really the external. It's actually you. It's a projection of yourself, of something within you that's being triggered. Ooh. Yes. Yeah. <laughs> and it's it's so interesting because I think we there is a fear as well when we're being triggered or when there's we're holding judgment. Mm-hmm. There is a fear because there's something else underneath. It's either a reflection or insecurity of ourselves that we see somebody expressing in the complete opposite way. And yes, there's a lot of self-help folks, scientific methods, but you know, the spiritual way has always been here. Yeah. It's always been a part of us. And it's funny because when you share about how people didn't know that the author of the four agreements was a shaman and like, it's amazing how people's perception can change just by like yeah. a label. Yeah. What are no, some misconceptions sure. of shamanism? Um, I think there's some misconceptions that, um, you know, it's really out there. It's, Oh, that's, it's, it's, um, I think there's misconceptions, um, where it might be like, oh, I could never do something like that, you know, Mm, and where a lot of the teachings and a lot of like the practices are very grounded, like they're very rooted, um, you know, within yourself. And again, like with the elements and bringing those in and calling them in and even just simple things as, you know, the gratitude of what we have, but gratitude for even the elements. So, you know, being mindful that you can even like take a shower and you're thankful for the water that you have, like you're thanking grandmother water for being able to take this shower. And it's, it's that incorporating the mindfulness throughout your entire day as well. And, and it's also about the practice of, you know, having a practice in the morning. And this is what um, my, uh, my shaman coach that I also have as well, um, Rebecca Luen, who has um, divine roots and she's amazing. But, you know, she always talks about having like practice where, you know, you, if you have like an altar place where you can be and being able to have those foundations, it's not like you have to spend an hour meditating um, in front of it, but just having that practice of coming back into center is just so, it's able to build your resilience. And yeah. whatever it may be that, you know, that you want to honor and, um, you know, having like these ceremonies to honor. And it, the funny thing is at the end of the day, you know, your altar is really inside yourself. You're just having something physical in front of you um, as a place for you to really center. Mm. It sounds like basically a practice of, presence and intentionality it's the way I'm understanding it's like it's how you're connected to everything to what you interact yeah and I think sometimes you know just maybe based on tv shows or the news people might misinterpret these like you know as something that are so disconnected and ungrounded unrooted but they never bother to look into it more than just yeah. what they don't, they might see one random ritual and think, Oh, this, you know, they're being weird, but it's not, yeah. it's just such a human part of us to want to connect. It's like to be present in a human experience where technology sometimes helps us, but also disconnect us from the human experience. Yeah. 
and it's I think with all of it is it's all about just being awake because so many of us just and I can attest this for years of just being on autopilot and then you know you just be like angry about things but you don't know why or you just you just be so frustrated about things and or you just feel completely or you're just blaming right it's like um in the four agreements when he talks about you know people are either the victim or the judge and it's about that's where you're kind of disconnecting from those two things and being fully aware and who you are and taking that ownership and being like okay if something's triggering me like let's let's like feel into this and find what that is that's coming forth which can be hard because sometimes you just want to be like ah it's their fault <laughs> right (laughs) yes like I love how you brought forth like the idea of taking responsibility for ourselves and I think everybody can be a judge everybody have things to say but when it comes down to how are you reacting to the things that are happening around you not at all of people want to do that work yeah it's yeah and it's you have to have that self-awareness to be able to do that work like that's really the first step. Yeah. And there is no getting it right. I, I imagine it's always a learning experience. Oh yeah. <laughs> <laughs> One step forward, two steps back. You're like, ah, and that's the other part too, is that having the self-compassion to not beat yourself up, which I find I have a tendency because you're like, I should be farther along than this. <laughs> same here I'm like why do why is this voice come I know that I've already gone a long way but I'm like why am I criticizing myself when I'm not in my center it's so easy to just go back to our old habits oh yeah no for sure it's um it can be very difficult to um stay present mm-hmm. and that's where it's very much you know with any of these with spirituality it's really around not trying to do everything, but it's around consistency of being Mm -hmm. um, consistent in your approach. And that's like another philosophy is where you want to be consistently showing up. Mm. I love that. And also a question because based on my personal experience, I have so many foundations and grounding tools But whenever we're going through a tough time, it's so hard because we don't feel like doing them. We just want to, you know, we don't have the energy to want to, you know, get up and meditate or do the things that feel good to us. How do you personally bring yourself back in these moments? Um, For me, I find it's like having a routine is really good. Mm -hmm. Um, You know, since I'd moved, I found my routine was completely off. You know, I didn't have my space specifically of where I was going to be. And what I found was, is doing those little things. It's incremental. You know, I don't need to spend, you know, a whole hour meditating in front of my altar, but even just five minutes. Mm -hmm. And um, I was actually at a session with Rebecca. And that's what one of the things that she had said is, you know, just lighting a candle. She's like, that could be it. And it's when we try to (laughs) have this mountain that we're like, I'm going to do this and this and this. And that's the same with habits too. They Mm -hmm. talk about it's that keep it incredibly small because, you know, you don't want, um, you don't want to start something and then, you know, halfway through you're like, yeah, I'm going to do this run and I'm going to do this. And then we're going to have all this stuff. And, um, and then of course it doesn't happen kind of like new year's resolutions, <laughs> but you have those small incremental shifts and they start to become the habits and they start to, um, build upon that. But I do find that it's usually when you need it the most is when it goes by the wayside. <laughs> So it's being conscious about that. It's like bringing it back. <laughs> right. And also from what I'm hearing, it's, it sounds like almost releasing the expectations. You're doing this to take care of yourself, not because you think it can fix 
whatever you're going through. Because I think yeah. sometimes our mindset is like, I'm going to do this. I want to feel fabulous. But if you don't, <laughs> then you stop doing it. <laughs> yes, right? You're like, I don't need this anymore. <laughs> yeah, it's, it's not working. It's not working. <laughs> yeah, no, it's true. And that's what, and that's why I think um, through the pandemic, it has helped me because it helps me to come back. And it helps me to know that you're supported even when you're when you're not feeling that. <laughs> yeah, or you're completely separated from everyone. Yeah. Yeah. I wanted to ask a little bit about your work as a shaman and a positive psychology practitioner. What common theme have you noticed around the woman you've supported? that keeps them from coming back to themselves, from stepping into their light, their wisdom? Um, you mean like what, what has helped them kind of get through what they're dealing with or? More like what are some of the common blocks they experience? I don't know if it's something that can yeah. be generalized. Oh, for sure. And I, I experienced it a lot too but one of the common blocks that I see a lot and it's kind of I feel like it's a common theme that when you kind of distill it down a lot of these blocks kind of stem from and to me it's that self-love and it's just so many things that we know and a lot of people think like oh sure but it, when you do have self-love, when you come from a place of love, you don't have the fear where a lot of the blockage comes from. And that's where a lot of us weren't taught self-love. You know, we were taught to I don't know, I'll give you love if you do this you know, these different things, or I'm going to hold love back from you because you're doing this. And I feel that having that abundance, that unconditional love, we tend to hold it from ourselves. Wow. Yeah. I think sometimes loving ourselves can be the hardest because we're also such big big judges of ourselves yeah 100 percent. like we're our own worst critics and yeah. that's where that self-compassion also comes in that comes with those that self-love is being able to love yourself unconditionally i think is one of the biggest one of the biggest things that we have to overcome yeah. to be in that space so we don't fall in the space of fear of um, that lack that, you know, I think a lot of us have. I can even see for myself, right, that when you have that self-compassion, a lot of these things of comparison, right, like I'm not good enough, I don't have this, I need that, I'll be happy when. <laughs> it's all oh, these yeah. things that come uh, that kind of comes back to that yeah it's such a like unraveling journey to come back to ourselves and fall into self-love because before my burnout I never thought that I didn't love myself I'm like I'm taking care of myself and all that it was until I was burnt out sick and like my body couldn't do it again that I realized that the stories that were in my head that were ruminating was towards me not doing enough, not being enough and feeling unworthy of that yeah. place. And then I'm like, yeah, it didn't mean I didn't love myself, but I didn't know how to be with myself mm -hmm. or feel comfortable with the shadow sides. Yeah, no, for sure. Yeah, that word of unworthiness, I think is that other side of like the self-love where it's like you don't feel worthy I'm not worthy of this I don't deserve it it's these things of I'm not good enough it's all these negative self-talks that we have and this is where the whole self-awareness comes in because I find you don't even realize you have them 
like for a long time, I had imposter syndrome for years. And, but if you talk to me then, you'd be like, oh, I have so much confidence. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> oh, I'm good. I'm good. So it's only looking back. Um, which is hard is because when you're in it, you can't see it. It's usually when you come out of it that you see how much you were in the darkness. Mm. So yes. It's an interesting paradigm to see like where people are on their journey and um, helping people on their path. And that's where you kind of have to meet people where they're at. And that's mm-hmm. where that releasing that judgment of where people at because they're just in a different part of their journey Mm. what are some ways that you support people in that process um I support them through helping do you mean like different things that I just do in general yeah yeah, just like in general or someone who comes to you is like I feel disconnected from myself and I know every case is different, but mm. yeah, what practices do you guide them through? Oh, there's lots of different ones. Um, that's what some of the ones for even the journey, um, even through like energy healing, I'll take them through. I'll do like journal prompts for them. We'll even like walk through like different kind of scenarios of what they're dealing with just to even just to even see certain patterns that they might not see is um, is a great way and allowing them to feel supported when they're going through that. Um, and then having one of the things that I found to be really amazing is you have gratitude, but appreciation for yourself, like going back to that self-love, it's like, I appreciate you for being here. I appreciate you for, for, you know, having that tough conversation. There's so many things that we teach people to have gratitude for what we have, but not actually, you know, for ourselves and going back to having that self, that self-love and compassion. You also have a community program or a community ritual that you do every month called the Full Moon Sacred Circle. Yeah, the full moon sacred circle. Yeah. So it's um it's one where we all come together energetically and there's been some fun things that have come out of that. Um, which even though we're all separate, like it's done right now on virtual, but the connectedness between the people has been amazing. And that's where we do like grounding and we go through this kind of um, healing process. And then I take them on a journey. So I open it up like a druid circle as if we were all together. And I call in the elements and then we journey and we journey to meet grandfather fire, which is to help you transmute and to release. Um, And sometimes I'll bring in other elements as well. But then he tells you, what you need to let go of because the full moon's all about Mm. releasing it's about abundance and it's also about forgiveness so I do a forgiveness practice as well and then uh, we open up the circle and share and And it's different for everyone right oh yeah yeah it's completely different um, experiences that people have and that they but it's it's funny how sometimes they're interrelated which has been just like phenomenal to watch. Yeah. And to hold that space. Has there ever been a time where somebody that is coming from me, because I feel like my third eye is pretty close. (laughs) Like I've tried (laughs) a lot of meditation regressions and I see glimpses and it's because I don't practice. So I don't go deeper, but for anybody that's their first time and they're interested what is like an example or an expectation of how the experience could look for them? Um, Well, that's the whole thing is like the thing about 
when spirituality is you try to release all your expectations Ooh, yes. because it's usually when you have these expectations and then we're disappointed <laughs> yeah 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 when it doesn't happen and that's when it can be very frustrating right and that's when mm-hmm. because you have it for a certain amount of what you think is going to happen and then when it doesn't it's it almost like kind of blocks you so when you're completely open to whatever comes that's when your subconscious kind of comes out like that's where you can actually like you can meet ancestors you can meet guides all these different things come through because it's usually when we have these expectations that our mental mind Mm -hmm. tries to kind of take over and that's what when you kind of take a back seat that's when it becomes more of that lucid dreamy that's what I was like when I said about the bear I'm like yeah. a bear <laughs> I'm like my conscience would never have picked a bear <laughs> <laughs> that's so funny well when you first started going back into these practices how was the transition from like the beginning and you trying all these things out to now where it's a lot easier to get into those states was there a lot of resistance um, you met at the beginning? Um, I still meet resistance sometimes when I'm doing them, but it's allowing to kind of like alter it. So mm. I can kind of feel if there's resistance. Um, so I'll try like a different technique. Um, one of my uh, one of my friends was doing a sound bath and she was she was guiding us through to meet our guides. And that was my kind of blockage was that I couldn't hear them. So I would said, well, then tell me how to like, show me, show Mm -hmm. me visually. So using something else as a way to kind of open that up because I'm more of a visual person anyways. So that's where I found it. um, It really kind of opened up for me. And she has her own company called Pause and Expand. And but being able to use the techniques that work for you, because some people are more audio, some people are more visual. And sometimes um, it changes as well mm-hmm. when you're when you go kind of into these journeys. Uh, my aunt was telling me that because she gets more of the feeling, intuition, she doesn't really see. But mm-hmm. the last one that she attended, she's like, I could actually see things. Like, <laughs> she's like, I could see, I could hear. It was a whole different experience. And this is someone who's been practicing for years and years and having a different, having a different shift. So it's when you're open to it, different things can really happen. Isn't that one of the biggest lessons of life? Just be yeah. open to it. Easier said than done, but also so much beauty on the other end. Mm-hmm. yeah no it's been it's been a journey <laughs> it's been a journey <laughs> how long does your full moon sacred circle last usually uh an hour an hour and people yeah. can join via online right now from anywhere in the world <laughs> yeah yeah so the next one will be um june 14th June 14th. Okay. We'll yeah. see if this episode launches right before then, <laughs> Yeah, <laughs> but I'll link it in the comments so they can stay in tune with like any update that you have. Yeah, that would be great. Yeah. Do you That's have been any... so great talking with you? Uh, likewise, likewise. Do you have any, I guess, advice for people who are starting to step into this world? <laughs> any recommendations? Um, honestly, um, uh, my biggest recommendation is just be open and mm-hmm. being open to what interests you and then just learning more about it. That's kind of how I just started was just finding the things that really interested me and the things that I just found to be fascinating and then just learning more about that and adapting it. And the one thing I do love about spirituality is that you can make it your own. So, mm-hmm. you know, I consider myself to be a druid, but I bring in shamanism and I bring into all these different aspects. Mm, that's amazing. Are you ready for some rapid fire questions? <laughs> I am. Um, my computer's about to die. <laughs> I think I have 12% battery left. 12%? <laughs> oh my gosh. 
but yeah grab a charger or we'll let's see <laughs> i think i can make it through the rapid questions <laughs> yeah i think i think we can do we can use that 12 percent <laughs> yeah what's the best compliment you've ever received uh, uh the best compliment i ever received is uh no one could ever consider you to be normal <laughs> <laughs> or never one could ever accuse you of being normal. It was the best compliment I've ever received. A book that's changed your life. Hmm. Oh, there's been so many. I think I would actually say The Four Agreements because I think it was the first kind of spiritual book that I had read. <laughs> first thing you do when you wake up. First thing I do. I try to do my morning ritual, but either that or go running. I try. Not in the winter time, but <laughs> in the summer time. We do our best. We'll do our best. <laughs> what does coming home to you mean? Mm. Coming home to you for me is, is that self-love. It's coming home to yourself. And knowing that everything that you actually need isn't out there, it's in here. A beautiful reminder. <laughs> <laughs> what do you want more of? Uh, presence. Hmm. Advice, words for your younger self? be kind to yourself finally where can people find you um they can find me at uh fearlesslotus.com or even on instagram uh, at fearless.lotus yeah yeah and i feel like you know as i go through this journey that the people who need you find you. <laughs> Megan. Yes. That will be on my calling card. <laughs> yeah. I'm like, well, what a way to close this. <laughs> wow. Thank you so much. This. <laughs> Thank you, Megan, so much for sharing your story, what you do, and just sharing your light with us. Oh, thank you. And thank you for sharing your light with me. It's been an honor to meet you. And it's been an honor to have these conversations with you and just seeing you on your journey as well, that we can walk together. Likewise. <laughs> thank you, Megan. Thank you so much for listening to the Whole and Unleashed podcast. If you're feeling pulled to get into action and want to connect within, check out the Aligned and Embody journal on wholeandunleashed.com. You'll also find resources on mindset, human design, and archive for past episodes of this podcast. And if you've enjoyed this episode, please share, leave a comment or review on iTunes and Spotify. Thank you so much for tuning in and have a wonderful day wherever you are.